Right, here we go. We're doing the uh, short, short version. We tried to do the short, short version. I doubt it. Second uh, Kings chapter 20, verse 1. There is a king by the name of Hezekiah. He was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, God spoke to him and said, Go tell the king, Hezekiah, he's going to die. Get his things in order. Go get your will prepared. Who are you going to give what to? You know, who's going to take over this job or that job so that way there's no problems when you leave? All right? My dad died. We already knew. My brother was in charge of uh, this, and I was in charge of what I was always in charge of, which was sales. And uh, my daughter works for me. And, and uh, make sure that she gets the lead so she can make sales. So everything was in order. So he's been told, you're going to die. So Hezekiah, when he heard it, uh, he, he uh, went and wept sore in verse 3. And he wept. He said, Lord, I beseech thee, O Lord, I remember how I walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart. As perfect as a man can be. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. When he heard the message from the preacher, you're going to die. Get your stuff in order. Hezekiah started praying to God. He started crying. I've, I've done everything you've asked. And God heard the prayer of Hezekiah and told the preacher, forget it. Tell him he's got 15 more years. I'm going to give him 15 more years. You talk about getting a prayer answered. Amen. He got 15 more years. That was bad news, but I'll tell you what. It was good news. And Hezekiah said, uh, show me a sign, because I don't believe you, preacher. Maybe you're just trying to comfort me so that this death will just come quickly and then you know, I'll die. He said, okay, you want me to bring the son forward or you want me to bring the son back? And the guy said, well, it's easy to bring it forward. I mean, you know, let's, let's make it go by. Mm -hmm. He said, okay. So, so, you know, the preacher said, told God, as guy wants a sign that he's going to live for 15 years. He wants a son to go back. Now. So it is 12 o'clock. He says, I want you to make it 11 o'clock. He did it. And Hezekiah knew he was going to live for 15 more years. Amen. Amen. God loves answering prayer. Amen. Amen. Especially for those that have lived for Him. He said, well, I ain't been living that long for Him. Well, start today. Amen. Because you never know. You may need Him one day. Amen. Doctor says, uh, he ain't gonna make it. The embalmer said, What spices would you like? And Hezekiah says, Forget it. I'm gonna live another 15 years. Forget about the embalming. All right? <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He wept. He wept. Mm -hmm. He reminded God. How do you get your prayers answered? You remind God of the things that you've done for God. Yeah. Now, let me say this. If your list is one thing, you may have a hard time convincing God to let you live another 15 years. Mm. That makes sense? Amen. 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 Remember me, Lord! In other words, look at my list. All the stuff I did for 
you. Come and look. Come take a look at the list. If you look at this list, amen, that's a pretty big list. Amen. I've got a bunch of stuff for you. Come on now. Amen. 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 God remembered. So I'm going to let you live. Amen. Amen. He changed God's mind. Amen. Excuse me. Did you know God can, uh, you can change God's mind? Mm -hmm. You can change God's mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was Elijah, another preacher. I love Elijah. He called fire from heaven, smoked on the Baal priest. And then those that were still alive, he told the people of Israel, he told them Jews, he said, now are you for God? Or are you for Baal? They all said, we're for God! He said, then grab all them Baal priests and let's start cutting off their heads. I can just see the preacher go, there's your head? Fine! Bring me another one! You said, that's a bloody preacher! You better believe it, buddy! That's my hero! Amen. I love a man that can fight. Bring me another one of them bail preachers so I can cut his head off. That's come on. So Ahab goes back, tells his wife everything's happened. He said, Don't worry about it, baby. I got to take you. She tells Elijah, I'm going to do the same thing to you that you did to me. Not this man is scared of nothing. All right? This is God's man. But he's at a weak point now. And this skinny little old whore, amen, this dirty-legged whore says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to have somebody kill the preacher. So the preacher leaves and goes to the mountain. Amen. He hides out over there. And God says, I ain't there with you yet. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wasn't in the cloud. He wasn't in the fire. He was in a small, still voice. You say, do you ever hear from God? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is a small, mm -hmm. still voice. Mm -hmm. You say, do you hear it every day? I wish I did. Mm -hmm. You say, do you, do you hear it every year? I wish I did. Mm -hmm. But I have heard mm -hmm. that voice mm -hmm. from heaven. I've heard that voice. Mm -hmm. So because Ahab has been a very bad boy, him and his wife, and this is a wimpy man. He's a king, but he's a wimp. He says, and she said, why are you, cry? why are you crying? Why, why are you such so sad? And she said, well, my neighbor over here, you know, I want to buy that property next door. We won't sell it to him because it's part of his inheritance as a Jew, and, and I want to grow my herbs. Now, I don't know what kind of herbs they were, but it must have been some good stuff. Amen. I mean, some real good herbs. Hey, hallelujah. And she said, oh, don't worry about it, baby. So she got a bunch of liars, mm -hmm. and they all said that he was a Baal worshiper, mm -hmm. and they had him killed. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The king now gets the land. Mm -hmm. But the preacher hears about it, God hears about it, and God sends the preacher to talk to Ahab. And he tells Ahab, we know what you did. We know what your wife did. Guess what? The dogs are going to eat her and only leave her hands and feet behind. I think it's just hands and feet. Maybe just hands. Not sure. You'll have to read that on your own. See which one it was. You can let me know next week after you read it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, he hears the star. He said, you're going to die, Ahab, too. King Ahab, you died. You died today. You stole a man's land. 
so you could grow your herbs. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was mint and stuff like that. You know, that you grow. I'm not really sure. The site just says herbs. Okay, amen. Uh, I, I, I've been to Israel. They grow poppy. It's wild. You say, what's poppy? Uh, that's what you make heroin out of. Amen. So I don't know what kind of herbs he was making in Israel, but he's growing something. Amen. Amen. So the preacher shows up and says, Ahab, you died. You know what Ahab did? In 1 Kings 21 27, when he heard the words, he ran his clothes, he put on sack clothes, that's potato sacks, palmed the flesh, and fasted, didn't eat anything, and lay in sackcloth and went softly. He said, What does that mean? That means he began to pray. Verse 29, 1 Kings 21, 29, you would not believe what God did. This is the most wickedest man in the world as far as I'm concerned. Besides, well, there's a couple of them on my top ten list. Uh, See thou how he has humbled himself before me. Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring in his days, but in his Son, today will I bring the evil upon his house. In other words, I'm going to kill your, his wife, but I'm just going to wait till he dies mm -hmm. of natural causes. And then we'll bring all the judgment on the house of Ahab on his family. Mm -hmm. You say, what is that? 